Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 25th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Kaspersky has a write-up of what they call Moonbounce, a new type of UEFI malware that is, well, even more difficult to remove than some of the malware that we have seen in the past. Now, with UEFI, you do have multiple components. One is the SPI flash, uh, that's the uh, serial peripheral interface flash, a little bit of flash memory that sort of has the basic uh, firmware that's uh, being used uh, to boot the computer but then you also do have a special uh, partition an EFI system partition that uh, may contain things uh, like parameters and such for UFI to boot now uh, the ESP the EFI system partition that's on your hard drive it's not on uh, this uh, flash memory Prior malware did mostly focus on the ESP. So that meant if you swapped your hard drive, uh, you were good. You basically had a clean system. What Kaspersky is now observing is malware that actually makes some subtle changes uh, to the SPI flash. And with that, uh, swapping your hard drive is no longer really going to clean the system. So the usual repartition reinstall trick is not going to cut it here. And well, uh, what the malware does uh, very briefly here, uh, more details in Kaspersky's report. It's uh, not really possible to summarize it all here in the podcast, but once you boot the system, components from SPI flash are copied and injected into the uh, Windows loader and the Windows kernel, which then is used uh, to essentially reinfect the system if uh, you had it cleaned up uh, before. Kaspersky does speculate that uh, this originates uh, from a particular advanced persistent threat uh, group and was a targeted attack. They do publish the indicators of compromise, so you can check your own network if you communicated with any of uh, these hosts. They do also recommend that you update your UEFI firmware regularly and then enable BootGuard as enabled or also enable any trust platform modules. And SonicWall users, be aware, a uh, vulnerability that SonicWall patched in December is now actively being exploited. This affects the SMA 200, 210, 400, 410 and 500 V appliances. The vulnerability itself is a buffer overflow in the Apache HTTP server in the mod CGI module. So make sure that you have your systems updated. This is something that keeps happening, that uh, these vulnerabilities are exploited fairly quickly after they're being patched. And as organizations defend against ransomware, backups, of course, are often sort of the last line of defense. That's why it's important to keep your backup systems updated. Dell EMC AppSync just released an update patching three vulnerabilities, at least in the product itself, then additional vulnerabilities sort of in third-party components. One in particular interesting sort of from a ransomware perspective is that there is a get methods being used with sensitive query strings that an unauthenticated attacker may be able to exploit. So this is one of those situations where you do have a ransomware actor in your network. They're able uh, to see some of your traffic, access some of your systems. This is the kind of vulnerability that they need to then compromise your backup process. And we got an interesting blog here by researchers from Incognita Tech. Uh, they looked at Twitter credentials stored in GitHub. Now, the reason that's sort of interesting is uh, GitHub does offer scans where it checks its repositories for any secrets that someone may have leaked here by mistake. But the problem with uh, Twitter's uh, tokens is that they don't sort of follow the standard formats. So that makes them a little bit hard to find. So these Researchers from Incognita Tech uh, 
did just that. They looked for uh, these secrets and found, of course, plenty of them. I believe about uh, 9,500. Now, they also took an interesting approach then to notify the victims. And not unsure sure here of the ethics behind here. Let me know what you feel about it. But uh, they actually used then uh, these uh, credentials to tweet on uh, the victim's behalf basically tell the victim hey you know i was able to create this tweet on your behalf uh, because you leak your credentials this is also not an old problem according to some statistics they published their ongoingly new credentials being added and being exposed in github if anything it appears to be accelerating a little bit in the last year or so well, then a little bit um, note for a story that I covered earlier uh, this week, and that's about uh, QR codes being misread uh, by some Google software. Apparently, this is not just affecting uh, Google. The OnePlus phones apparently have similar issues. Not really a big surprise because, of course, a lot of these techniques are very similar across uh, different operating systems and across uh, different software. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.